Tell me a funny story. Yeah, I, I've just been in Paris for the last two months. And I was helping out Steve Bates and Didi Ramon. They were putting a group together. I was helping them anonymously, not using my name. And uh, Didi Ramon, he used to be, he used to hang out on 53rd and 3rd. And that's a gay part of town. And I guess I, I told it in front of his wife. So he, what he did was, he threw bleach all over my clothes, set, set my guitar on fire, and I ain't got, my, I ain't got too many good clothes left. <laughs> Can I take you back to kind of the, the New York Dolls days? It was like the punk, do you, you like the word punk, do you? I hate the word punk. I was never a punk, I never played pink punk music. And how did you describe Johnny Thunder's rock and roll? It was rock and roll. And, and, did Malcolm McLaren, uh, he managed you very early on in, in Yeah, he's, he's the reason why we broke up. He's the reason why we broke up? Yeah. We, he, he dressed in... What did he do He dressed us in red, red hat and leather, and we used to have a, a red hammer and sickle flag behind us, and our motto was, better red than dead. You were way ahead of your time, weren't you? But, he went off then and more or less kind of stole the idea of the New York Dolls and well, came with the second we met, him, we, met, we met him when we first went to London in 72 and we brought clothes in his store and he got the concept. Then he worked with us for a while and me and Jerry Nolan put the band in. And were you kind of, did you feel aggrieved when Johnny Rotten and the Sex Pistols came along and seemed to take They were great, man. They were great, great live rock and roll band. I mean, music truth isn't competitive, first of all. And it shouldn't be competitive because music is, you like this music, I like that music. And I was, I thought they were a great rock and roll band. They go on tour with them, it's fabulous. Now you grew up in, in New York City, didn't you? Right. Yeah. And you, you, you must have had a good musical education growing up in the town with all those good bands. And I've seen the best. Who, 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 tell me some of the bands that you grew up in. Janis Joplin, Howlin' Wolf, Jimi Hendrix, The Yardbirds, King. And you, you liked a lot of those girl groups as well, didn't you? I remember reading something about that somewhere. Yeah, like them and all of them. So you're here, you're going to do a few gigs here now. Here. You're in, in Dublin tomorrow night, is it? Uh, you're, I think you're in Dublin tomorrow night. It's only telling me in Belfast on Saturday, is it? Uh, somebody will tell me. Somebody will tell me tomorrow. Somebody will tell you tomorrow, yeah. And they're doing, I think you're doing a late night gig tonight. Somebody said you're going to be yeah, able to find the gig somewhere later on. Do you still like just getting on planes and trains and boats and doing all that? Uh, I figure the only other thing I can do is besides play music is be a pimp, so. And what about New York? You don't live there anymore, no? No, I hate New York. It's gotten so sleazy, it's gotten so... Manhattan's like the Bronx. So is it a damaging place to live then, is it? Well, most places are damaging. Yeah. Well, it all depends how... Cope with it. Yeah. You know, you all the friends, of, the friends you have. I hear you had a bit of an adventure on a plane yesterday. This is really fun. I, I, I took I took uh, British Air, Airways to to pa uh, from Paris to um, to London to transfer, and I just bought this new powder, this new makeup, and I was testing it in the bathroom. So I guess the stupidest one in af after me. And saw all this brown powder on the floor, so she must have thought it was yeah, an illegal substance. Well, you don't have a, I mean, you, you did have a serious habit. You've been on methadone now for, yeah. for a long time, haven't yeah. you? It's a very hard, people still beat up on you every time you go somewhere, on the basis that they consider you're still a junkie. Listen, if I was straight for 50 years, they would still call me a junkie. Is that part of your legend, though, Johnny, is it's it? It's not part of it's not, I play rock and roll. I don't, I... I haven't read anything about myself in 10 years. I haven't even read the book uh, that's been written about me. That's how, that's how I survive it. Do you mean that you know, what you are now is what you are uh, what you, that, that I don't, you're writing about? Well, well did, you ever, did you ever hear anybody want to grow up and be a rock writer? <laughs> Yeah. But by the same token, whether you like it or not, uh, everywhere you go in the world, there are people who revere you, people who idolize you, and just see you as a kind of seminal influence in their lives. Well, I hope it's the music. 
Did you ever think of a Sovinist style and that you were the original rebel, the original kid on the streets of New York? I copied everything from somebody else. You know, everything, everybody, everything comes from somebody. I mean, Keith, took, Keith Richards took it from Chuck Berry. I took it from Keith Richards, you know. And you pass it on to Johnny Rotten. Have you, well, do you see in today's bands, do you see a legitimate contender for your title? There is, there is, there is no, today's music has no roots. No roots at all, and I find that disgusting. It's wank music. They're just trying to compete. I mean, people, I mean, the rock bands, they're supposed to be rock and roll bands. They're, I mean, they, they're closed. Every stud is in perfect order. There isn't a stud out of place. I mean, that's rock and roll. Is that American rock and roll, though, or is that, do you find that everywhere you go? All, all over the world. Yeah. Uh, how long do you think you can go on kind of gigging, Johnny? Till I die. You, you kind of see yourself in the, like a legendary blues man who'll just keep going. And I going. hope so. I hope I don't turn black, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of... Are you still, do you still find a lot of motivation to write? I mean, what kind of things do you write oh, yeah. about now? Well, I write about children. I, write, I just wrote one about uh, the homeless, called Help the Homeless. About, um, about the, the way um, the Americans treat the homeless. I mean, it's, it's, it's just... It's, it's just horrible. Travesty, yeah. It's horrible. I mean, I can't believe the way... I mean, in Tompkins Square Park, there's a park in New York. There's maybe 200 makeshift homes. They, went, they rolled over all the homes with garbage trucks. Just to flatten it? Just to get rid of them. Well, listen, I hope it's time you're going to hit me. It's not going to be that heavy, is it? No. <laughs>
So, Johnny, you were putting a group together with Sid at one point, right? Yeah, and um, in England, about 77, we tried it. It didn't work out with him. Uh -huh. How come it didn't work out? Uh, I couldn't put up with his girlfriend. Uh huh. Looks like uh, he couldn't do that, huh? I don't know if he couldn't. Somebody couldn't. Uh huh. What was it like playing with him? Well, he was a great guy. Um, no, I never met anybody like him. I probably never will meet anybody like him again. Uh huh. One unique character. Uh huh. Well, yeah, he had a good attack when he was playing. And he had a rock and roll attitude. Really rock. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Was it like just fooling around with him, like after he got done playing and you're just hanging out? Yeah. You just, you know, never knew what to expect. Uh huh. A really crazy guy. Who else was in the group? Well, it was just me and him were trying to write some songs and start something new. It was just me and him, actually. Uh -huh. Was it one point where you were doing a thing with Jerry Nolan, too? Uh, he would have been in the group eventually, yeah. yeah just, about how long was it together for? A week. Uh -huh. Was that right up until they went, or...? Uh... No, that was way before that. This was in England. Uh-huh. Great. Thanks, you guys. Anything else you want to add? Mm, probably have a nice day. This one I read up about a friend of mine called Sid. And um, God bless him wherever he may be. I'm sorry I didn't have more to say.
Hey, Chun. I cut my bitch's head off on my tattoo. She got wise. Boy, how fucking, uh, what do you got there, pizza? This one's called So Alone. This is a very intelligent statement. It says, junk kills, speed lives. I play music, that's what I do. You know, I'm not a professional drug taker.
One time New York Dolls drummer Jerry Nolan died in New York City on Thursday night of a stroke brought on by meningitis. Nolan was 45 and had been hospitalized for the past 11 weeks. Together with another ex-doll, Johnny Thunders, he had played in a downtown New York band called the Heartbreakers about a decade ago. And he's being buried next to Thunders, who died of an apparent drug overdose last year, in a cemetery in Queens, New York. Some people use money, some people use dedication, some people use pure heart and soul. It's all valuable. We had a lot of fun on the road. And to make things better, we like to fool around and have a good time. Uh, we never intentionally did this to do anything to anyone else. It was strictly private, it was within our own group, we had our own language, we had our own things that turned us on and we could make fun of or we could have fun with. And this typical little thing that was really nothing. Johnny happened to have really laid it on the night before, and he was getting sick for flying. And we had done a long flight, I think, that was a flight. I think it was from LA to New York. Well, he was sick, sick as a dog, a, a real dirty dog. But what happened was the press really, really attacked us. They charged. They attacked. They had people there with press passes on that had nothing to do with being in the press. I mean, we were mauled. And uh, that, on top Oh, yeah. These weren't even press people. 90% of it was phony. Now, the few press people were there were, I guess, impressed that it, there was such a scene going on. And obviously, they knew that these people with press cards weren't in the press. They were just crazy groupies. 
And Johnny ended up vomiting so sick, like, I mean, really letting it out, that it went everywhere, it blew up, that music was taking on a new change here and we could have fun with this. Uh, basically, generally, let's keep the songs, the music, hot and 50s, magical. The two-minute song, the three-minute song, no more than that. Two-minute, two-and-a-half-minute song, hit and run. Come on stage, hit and take off. And we did that, and we did it the best. John, the New York Post in an article recently said you changed your image, your bad boy image. Mm -hmm. Is that true? And what? Is it evolution or? Well, it's growing up. It's growing up and realizing your priorities. I think. You know, it's um, it's important to realize, you know, who you are and what you are. You know, I think you know. And I had a rough time, but now it's behind me. You had a rough time. Mm -hmm. In what way? Well, I had a terrible problem with uh, drugs for a long yes. time. Yeah. And, you know, to, uh, to beat that and still survive, it's a great education. I'm glad, so glad. Oh, I mean, it's, you know, it's great. It's coming alive again. Mm. Johnny Thunder, he beat drugs. <laughs> Come back and forth and play with Johnny all the yeah. time, pretty much. No specific band. Played with Walter also a couple of times. Mm. But yeah, we keep in contact on and off. Writes good songs, 
and there's a place around the corner called um, Little Monster Studios or something. So I was doing him a favor, just playing drums for him. But it turned out that we all, it turned out better than we expected. So we were thinking of actually forming a group. So right now it's only three pieces and if we find another guitar player singer, well, I think we'll make a group out of it. But does it sound anything like the New York Dolls or what's it sound well, like? Well, it'll always be in that groove, you know, anything I do will always be heartbreaker type, uh, New York Doll type of music. I'll never change that. And, so, and that's what these guys happen to be into, you know, rhythm and blues. So, um, I, by accident is what happened. I just was going to do the drumming for them. It turned out that we liked each other and the music was really good. Syringes you gave Jesus gave him hepatitis. That's why he was yellow and he couldn't stay in the ground. He rose three times, went to heaven, and now no one knows if he is alive, dead, or just not around. thing as a bad kid. Children live with criticism and they learn to condemn. Children live with hostility. They better learn to fight. Children live with ridicule and they learn to be Children live with hatred And they hate them now Children are people just Who just like me and you Children have a purpose For my doll and dear Children live with sadness and they learn to be just Children live with tolerance They better learn to fight Children live with hatred And they hate themselves Children live with me
Five young gents who turn New York around Sign their deal with a pop and a clown No money back is our guarantee You haven't a prayer but we'll look pretty pretty in cold blood Dressed in rags and trash When uptown came downtown They were smashed They call me killer In my band The Truman Capote Was our coolest fan In cold blood In cold blood In cold blood From lovers leap to lovers lean. Maybe you think you've guessed my name, Mr. Arthur Killer King. Cold blood. In cold blood. They stay our story, we'll never fade. I just want to know if we'll ever get paid. After our assassins are dead and gone, the New York dolls will live on and on and on in cold blood. Cold, cold blood. In cold blood. In cold blood. 